Welcome back. Before the break, we asked you what the average amount of equity released for gifting purposes was in 2020. And the answer was C, £55,000. If you want to get more insights and data on the equity release market, one of the best sources available is Keys Market Monitor, which you can download from their website. The address is now on the screen. Having heard from David Burrows and Steve Groves on the challenges and opportunities they see emerging in this market over the coming months and years ahead, what's the view from an advisor's perspective? What are the key issues facing those at the coalface of later life lending advice? To help me answer that, I have three representatives from the specialist advice market joining me in the studio right now. Uh, I've got uh, Stuart Wilson, who was here earlier, of course, and joining us uh, here now is Paul Soroya from Viva Retirement Solutions and Mark Orm from the Equity Release Experts. Uh, welcome to you both and uh, welcome back to Stuart, of course. Um, I wanted to pick up on this issue of uh, consumer confidence and sentiment in the market, um, given the, the, the light of COVID-19 still shining across us. But Mark, if I could start with you first, you uh, actually began your advice journey yeah, about six months ago, you started as an advisor right in the middle of a pandemic. What, what was that like? Yeah, um, obviously a difficult time to, to move from a, a, my current role into an advisory role, but I, I did feel that time was right. I felt the opportunities within this market and the support that clients needed um, was really important. So for me to, to move from a role where I'd been predominantly in, intermediary facing for a number of years uh, and to start building my own business within equity release was just a really good opportunity. You know, customers out there do need good advice. I think there's a, a real lack of new younger advisors coming through in this industry. And for me, that was a great opportunity to, to move into that space. Mm. And presumably that the the, the vast majority of that advice, or perhaps all of it, has been done remotely. Is yeah. that has that been a challenge as well? Yeah, I mean, I think historically this market has been predominantly a face-to-face -face industry. Mm. Um, what the last 12 months has shown is there's been a need to adapt to the current climate. And, and what's happened with COVID has meant that's been kind of forced. And I think the benefits of that now, um, remote advice delivered by te um, telephone or by Zoom has become part of normal advice procedures. I suspect what we'll see over the coming months and years is that will become much more normal. So where predominantly it was a face-to-face -face advice market, I think you'll see three areas developing. And I think that's good for consumers. I think it's great because we can ultimately spend more time with customers because we're spending less time in the car traveling around. And I think that gives better customer service, better outcomes. Mm. So I think that's a real positive of what we can deliver. Mm. So. And Paul, if I could bring you in at this point, I mean, what's what's been your take over the last 12 months from the perspective of, of Viva? What's it been like in terms of dealing with consumers both uh, during lockdown, periods of lockdown, and as we hopefully emerge out of the other side? Um, we, we've been lucky enough to be quite nimble and, and change the way that we've gone from face to face, face predominantly to uh, remotely. But we've been able to interact with clients in the right way, making sure things like vulnerability are still measured um, and, and something that we really think about. So as we've gone into each lockdown, the consumer confidence has reduced, and rightly so. Um, and then as we're edging out of it, it's increased. And now we're at that point of hopefully having a one-way system out of the, the pandemic. So throughout that time, we've had people that need the money to help themselves through the pandemic and people who think that their situation actually hasn't changed through the pandemic. But we've had lots of people who also rightly so, want to think about actually if they want to maintain their house, if they want to renovate the property or go on holidays, then actually that's a decision they might make later on in life. Mm. And Stuart, if I can just bring you in at this point, um, just listening to what Mark and, and Paul said there, a couple, a couple of interesting points around uh, these challenges of vulnerability, um, the, the ebbing and flowing of, of consumer confidence. Um, what, what's your take from, uh, from, a, from an air perspective mm. on this and the challenges? Yeah, very much echoing what the guys have, have already highlighted. Um, we're seeing a different profile in the advisor community. We're seeing more wealth managers coming into the sector. We're seeing more interest in um, differing reasons for doing equity release, uh, more awareness of tax mitigation, care planning. Uh, we know the challenges the social care crisis is throwing into the mix. Um, and we see more and more inquiries. What we also see is a changing in the consumer attitude with regards to reasons why they're raising capital. It's no longer, as it was maybe a few years ago, one or two reasons. We're now seeing an increasing number of reasons. 
average loan requests are rising because consumers, I guess a, a brutal element of this is it's brought mortality into focus in the consumer demographic that we're talking about. And so they're getting a lot freer with regards to trying to plan for things to do today, how to gift intergenerationally to help the children out onto the housing ladder. We're seeing that and the stamp duty uh, incentives have sort of speeded that up. But we're also seeing uh, more uh, improvement from a home improvement point of view, the desire to make their job lot better and to use that equity that they've built up to improve the quality of life for themselves and their families. So we're seeing multitude reasons for equity release now and often four or five or six different component parts to the capital that they're raising. So that's changing. So you're seeing one side, uh, a new demand, a new generation of advisors coming in at the younger age group, but also from the level four wealth management world for the first time in greater numbers and differing uh, consumer demands and profiling. Mm. And Mark, has that, has that been your experience in terms of dealing with consumers? Have you, have you seen this changing of attitudes towards the, the type of lending people are taking out, the reasons they're, they're approaching equity releases? Has, consumer, uh, has, has the consumer attitude towards equity release evolved over the last few months in yeah. the course of the pandemic, do you think? I think for me, having you know advising for six months, I've probably not seen the switch over a longer period of time, but I do echo Stuart's words in terms of Customers are now looking at equity release as a way of doing a multitude of things. You know, often is repaying secured and unsecured debt. But I think the home improvements, raising funds for holidays and emergency fund, potentially wanting to help their children with gifting, as we see, is a is a big reason why consumers are now looking at equity release. Um, and because often this is a, a one-time scenario where you will do equity release once, actually, I think it's important for consumers to think about everything they would like to do as they approach their retirement years. Mm. And Paul, what do you see as we uh, come out to the other side of this pandemic? Um, I guess the market sentiment seems to seems to show that we are seeing that return of confidence. The last six months or so, we're kind of back to lending volumes that are similar, if not at quite the same level as they were pre-COVID, or certainly heading back that way. What do you see as the sort of key growth prospects and opportunities in this market over the next six to twelve months? Are you are you optimistic? Yeah, very optimistic. I think there will be an explosion of activity within the market and activity that leads to to business and applications. So I think um, the sentiment back end of 2019 will continue. I, you know, I think everybody wanted to really hit the reset button at the start of 2021. That didn't quite happen. But actually, I think we're at that point now. So I think very optimistic for the future, but it's it's how we then manage um, an influx of, of inquiries and activity from advisor level to firm level to lenders and solicitors. Mm -hmm. And Stuart, what's, what do you think uh, in terms of what, what Paul's just said there? Um, what, what, the, what are the barriers and key challenges that, that lie ahead for us then in this market? Where, where are the pinch points, do you think, if we're going to see a return to that growth curve that we were on before COVID and before the stalling we saw in 2019, where, where are the uh, barriers going to be and how do we overcome those, do you think? There's a, there's a few of them, but none of them are insurmountable. Um, I think communication is at the heart of this. How we communicate our product, no customer buys equity release. People buy solutions, they buy dreams, they buy solutions to problems. The roof's gone, the kids need to get on their housing ladder, uh, they need the hip replaced or they want to go around the world and take the grandchildren with them. So those are what people buy. And I think interestingly, what we're seeing now is an evolution towards later life lending as a message and the reduction of this, uh, the, the message around equity release, because equity release confuses them. And I use a similar analogy here in the pensions world. When uh, George Osborne stood up and announced pension freedoms a number of years ago and removed the requirement for buying an annuity, annuity sales dropped because everybody didn't want an annuity. Interestingly, when you then ask the customer what they did want, they wanted a guaranteed income, they wanted secure um, money, they wanted tax efficient income. They wanted an annuity, but it was rebadged in essence and called something else. And then demand started increasing. People got more flexibility. Equity release later life lending. Fundamentally, under regulatory rules, it's a mortgage. So I think one of the barriers is our language needs to change and is actually already evolving. So we're talking to consumers about later life mortgages. I know reversions are obviously a factor in that, but account for a very, very small percentage. 
So I think how we communicate and present that is one barrier which is already changing. Um, we know the regulatory issues that have been called out, and I think we need to work as a collaborative in the sector to drive the standards to address um, the, the delivery to consumers and how that process is, uh, is ultimately um, taken through in, as a journey, including the consumer at every stage. So I think if we address the training needs, we address the understanding, we make sure that new entrants, new advisors, skill themselves up with the right competency um, and the right consumer focus, then I think those barriers will very quickly change. And then washing underneath all that is this huge and ever increasing demographic of more older people with lower incomes, um, less pension provision uh, in future years than they've ever had, an ever increasing demand for capital, for income or both. And so the, the perfect storm opportunity is down to us as a sector to make sure that we deliver those right outcomes in the right way, and then everything else will fall into place. And Stuart, thanks. And a couple of really interesting points there around uh, collaboration, which I want to come back to in just a moment. We were talking about that earlier, weren't we? But yeah. uh, your point about communication, I think, is a really interesting one. And Paul, I'd like to bring you in on this, actually. In terms of communication, marketing to clients, we're going to be talking about marketing a little bit later on today, and we've got some some other guest speakers coming in. But this, this ability to get across uh, what equity release can do for clients, how it works, then dispelling some of the myths and misconceptions. That's really important, isn't it? How does Viva go about uh, this, this particular topic? It is really important. So what we look to do is put ourselves in the shoes of the client and really answer the questions they're thinking about in their heads. They still think that their home could be taken away. They think of plans with very high interest rates. Uh, they think of inflexibility. So really in our marketing, we're really answering those questions without being asked them. And that's really important. When we speak to one client, they may speak to a few others and can educate them. But if we speak to mortgage brokers, wealth managers, um, we can speak to one person and educate them. And then suddenly they've got hundreds of clients that they can look to educate. And that's the way we look to do it. Mm. And Mark, from your perspective, as you're going out and seeing individual clients, um, lots, of, lots of people have misconceptions in their heads, don't they, about what equity release is, what it does, how it works, just as, as Paul's described, those myths of you know, you, you'll lose your house, that kind of thing, it's really high interest rates. What, what's your experience now? Are consumers more savvy? Are they more uh, well-informed about equity release? Or do you still have to do quite a lot of education with them when you meet them for the first time? I think it's interesting because you actually see clients on both sides of the spectrum. Um, there is definitely a lot more education and a client discussing equity release with you can often know a lot of the information around the features, how the interest rates work, um, and have a good idea of how the products operate. But then there are clients who maybe have seen equity release for the very first time. And I think they need their hand holding, explaining how the product works, what the benefit are, is of some of the features. I mean, a question that I would always put to clients is it's important whatever we do today is fit for purpose in 10, 15, 20 years time. And I think that's often where the modern lending features really come into play. Um, and just having them for very open, op open discussions about how it works, what their appetite is to certain aspects. Do they plan on moving? You know, what are their kind of thoughts if, if they do come into inheritance in the future? And I think getting those kind of good understanding of the customer up front is really important to delivering the right advice and good customer outcomes. Mm. So. And, and you work um, quite closely with um, uh, introducers as well. Is, that, is it a similar kind of education process that you need to go through with them? How does that work? I think you'd be amazed at the similarities yeah, I think the introducer base in, 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 in general is a mixture of mortgage advisors, investment advisors, and maybe also non-regulated businesses like will writers. Um, the education is mixed. I mean, some introducers have a really good concept and understanding of what equity release is. And other introducers may feel actually some of the myths that a consumer may feel, they also share those same type of myths. So I think starting with the basics of how the product works, the flexibility, in particular interest payments, I think um, mortgage brokers and investment advisors 
are often surprised at the level of flexibility when it comes to, you know, interest served products, voluntary type schemes, the option to repay a certain percentage of capital back free of penalties, and then also the flexibilities of early repayment penalties as well. I think that that is becoming more and more kind of paramount in helping introducers understand more about the product so they can talk more confidently to their customers. Often their customers who are going for maybe a remortgage in their 40s and 50s, maybe in 5, 10, 15 years time, start to ask that same uh, advisor around equity release. So the more education we can get into that channel, um, the better for our market. Mm. Thanks, Mark. And um, Stuart, a couple of interesting points there just raised by by Paul and Mark. Um, we, we've been talking about the returning of consumer confidence, uh, greater consumer awareness of equity release, more and more introducers coming into this space, talking to their clients about, uh, about the benefits of later life lending. Is equity release mainstream now, or have we still got some way to go? It's, it's getting there, it's on the cusp. Um, I don't think we're a million miles, and when that does happen, then we'll see an exponential curve of demand. That brings a note of caution that we need to make sure that standards remain and in, remain as they are and actually carry on improving. Um, I, I guess where uh, what's the what's the bit that will tip it over, and I think where we're still slightly deficient is maybe rebalancing how we communicate the product. Um, I'm I'm old school. I was brought up in direct sales where we were trained about features and benefits. Features are what we as advisors understand, so negative equity guarantee, uh, right of tenure. Benefits are the things that the consumers understand, the language that they buy into. And as I alluded, nobody wakes up in the morning going, oh, I must go down the high street and buy an equity release product. They buy the dreams, the aspirations, the solutions to problems. And similarly, we need to communicate. There's an old phrase of sell the sizzle, not the sausage. Um, and I think we need to maybe up the sizzle factor sometimes and not talk to customers in language that they struggle to understand. So I alluded earlier on to talking in the forms of mortgages for old, older people, uh, mortgages for mature borrowers. That's what these fundamentally are. And I sometimes think that we almost create our own barrier when we phraseology around equity release instead of mortgages. This age group understand and grew up with mortgages. They were the first big scale generation of homeowners through mortgage borrowing. So let's talk to them in that language, talk to them in the language they understand and communicate benefits and not features more. And then we'll flip over into mainstream very mm. quickly. Mm. Thank you, Stuart. And uh, Paul, just picking up on that point, um, thinking about the, the industry in its wider context, the regulator, the government, industry bodies, what do we need to do in order to collaborate and work more closely together to get us to that tipping point and, and turn equity release into this mainstream financial planning solution? I think that collaboration is definitely the key. We need our uh, stakeholders to be fully up to date with the modern plans, their benefits, but uh, sorry, their features, but also their benefits, so they can really understand how they can help a multitude of situations for people. It's really important for them to be able to promote our industry. They fully understand it, and that will only come through collaboration and education. Mm, okay, and Mark, same question to you, I guess. So, in terms of uh, your perspective on on the the future of this market, is equity release going to become a mainstream financial planning solution, do you think? I think it will. I think the time factor is probably still a little unknown. Um, I think what will change this market is the introduction of more advisors into the marketplace. I think that's already coming with some of the, the large mortgage networks and mortgage clubs. Their members are starting to advise their customers on equity release. So I think the growth in advisors will help push it forward. I think couple that with what the work the specialist can do, the equity release council, advertising in general, I think will really play a part into, into making this more of a normalised type solution for consumers to think about rather than necessarily a niche type product, um, which it probably still is at the moment, but right on the edge, as, as Stuart and Paul have mentioned, in terms of becoming more mainstream and more accessible um, to more customers. Mm. And one, one final point, if I, if I can put this to all of you, maybe start with, with you, Mark, as uh, you're relatively new into the advice world. Um, are, we, are we excited about this market? Is this, is this, um, uh, is this, is this a growth market or have we, have we reached a peak, do you think? And if, if you were sitting in front of a, somebody who's thinking as coming into this market, advising this space, what would be the sort of key hints and tips, the do's and don'ts that you'd put to them? 
I think absolutely. Um, you know, I'm, I've joined this industry five years ago in a slightly different role and wanted to move over to an advisory role recently um, because it has been growing. Yes, it's stuttered over the last couple of years, but there's been significant reasons of why it's stuttered. I think most industries have stuttered during that period. So I think if we look forward now, um, actually consumers will need our help and our products more than ever. Uh, some of the points that have already been discussed, um, retirement planning probably doesn't meet the expectations expectations of clients' retirement dreams. And I think equity release will play a fundamental part in that, in that area. Um, if I was new to this industry and wanted to join, I think find out more about it. Speak to some of the business that operate in this space. Um, I speak to the advisors. You know, people are very welcome and open and want to talk about that experience because I think we all have a common goal of wanting to be able to do our small bit in terms of developing the market in general. Fantastic. And, and, and Paul, your view, Viva, a, a growing business, an award-winning business. Um, what's, what's your view on the future and the, the opportunities in this market? And again, what sort of hints and tips and do's and don'ts would you be giving to somebody that's looking from the outside into this market and thinking of, of entering it? Sure. So the, absolutely, the future is bright. So now is the time to, to enter the market. But I would say to, to companies and people, only enter the market if you're going to invest time into getting up to speed with giving the right advice. Only come into the market if you're going to adhere to the highest standards. But with that in mind, then you know the world is your oyster within our market. Really important to be able to uh, get your voice heard and no reason why you can't, as a newcomer to the market, immerse yourself with lenders, solicitors, and the Equity Release Council to make sure that um, you can help increase standards. Fantastic. And Stuart, um, the final word to you. Um, what's your view on, on the future? Uh, is this one that um, fills you with uh, excitement, or trepidation, a bit of worry? What's, what's, uh, what's your view of, of where we go over the next 12, 18, 24 months? Generally, excitement because consumers need us. Um, this is underpinned not by transient features. Uh, if we look at the housing market at the moment, it's being um, artificially um, turbocharged by the stamp duty um, uh, offers and special sort of incentives that we've seen. Um, this market is underpinned by the demographic position of our consumers. We know more and more people need more and more money in elder life. Pensions uh, are changing. Retirement is changing. Um, people live on average 20, 25 years post-retirement. That's a long holiday. So they have an ever-increasing amount of monetary need. Housing wealth, we know, is a solution. It's not the only solution. There are lots of others that, uh, as advisors, we have to go through. But it is an ever-increasing solution. And I think it's moving into the stuff that we mentioned earlier, the, the care uh, crisis, the, uh, the tax planning situations, the estate planning. Um, and so many more people are engaging. I mean, we've seen a polar shift. Air Group last year moved into becoming the biggest distributor in the sector. We finished up last year with nearly 27% of the market coming through Air Group. And that's an accolade towards our members and the effort that they've put in and the support that we've reciprocally given back. But what we've seen now is it's not about um, the black and white training on products. We have software that does that. This is about, uh, for example, in the last few months, we've seen so much more engagement with networks, with distribution organizations. We are now providing huge amounts of engagement with those uh, companies, firms, distributors, networks to help train and prepare those advisors. So the word of caution is that we need to make sure that we do not compromise the standards, totally the opposite. We carry on driving them up and forwards. But in doing so, we are now on the, the brink of the real purple patch for this sector, that huge latent demand, the communication of the product into terms that consumers will embrace. And let's not forget, this is the generation that appreciate good quality service and good quality advice. And they say thank you and appreciate that. They also will tear you to pieces if you get it wrong. So brilliant, exciting opportunity. We're not commoditized. We're appreciated as an advising community with our consumers. And that's only going to get bigger and better. So come and join uh, the sector because it is exciting. 
A great final point to uh, leave on. Thank you to Stuart and to Paul and to Mark for joining me today. I do appreciate your time. We're taking another short break now, but we'll be back in just a few minutes when I'll be joined by John Somerville of the LIBF, Tish Hannafin from the Society of Later Life Advisors, and Matthew Jupp from UK Finance to discuss the important topic of advisor training and development in the later life lending market. And while you grab a drink and stretch your legs, we'll leave you with a question to ponder. According to research by Immortal Life, what percentage of advisors said that vulnerable clients are not necessarily easy to spot? We'll be right back. a mission to deliver your clients a better retirement. But you're not alone. With More to Life, you've got a dedicated team of specialists to back you up. Our advisor support team can help you with our fast path portal, live cases and further borrowing, while your personal telephone account manager is there to discuss specific client and product queries. Your business development manager can help you spot new opportunities and grow your later life business, helping you leverage the tools and resources from our learning lab, including CII accredited webinars, video masterclasses, and personalized marketing support. And don't forget our expert underwriters. They typically turn 85% of applications that start with a no into a yes. So always ask them for help if an application doesn't meet our standard lending criteria. Because while you're working hard for your clients, we'll always be working hard for you. More to life for advisors on a mission. Partnerships are one of the UK's leading equity release referral specialists. We work with your clients to unlock the financial potential in their home and secure a more comfortable retirement. The process couldn't be simpler. All we need is a name, address and contact number and we'll do the rest. And as we take 100% of the compliance risk for all advice given, you can focus on your business while we help your clients secure the lending they need. With a network of expert advisors across the UK and over 14,000 five-star reviews on Trustpilot, it's no wonder more than 8,000 registered introducers trust key partnerships to help them deliver better later life outcomes for their clients. We're here to help you grow your business. You refer, we chat, we advise and you earn. To find out more about equity release referrals or how we could support your business, give us a call or head to our website, Key Partnerships, the equity release referral service. to thrive in the later life market? Air Group has everything you'll need to realize your potential with the help of three market-leading propositions. Grow your business and enhance your income with Air Mortgage Club. Become a member today and you'll benefit from access to exclusive products and deals, enhanced procuration fees and unrivaled support from our knowledgeable team. Air Sourcing provides trusted, accurate and timely product sourcing technology and with fully live rates and knowledge bank integration for enhanced criteria searches, Air Sourcing is the most comprehensive product sourcing platform in the market. Boost your professional development with the Air Academy, fully accredited by the London Institute of Banking and Finance. You can have confidence in the Academy to develop your advice skills. Join Air Group today and start maximising your potential in this growing market. Contact our dedicated support team to find out more.
Air Group, your trusted later life services platform.